The original Muppet movie is a gem of a film that feels like the culmination of the Muppet Show run from the 1970s, but it also embodies exactly what the Muppets stand for. Their values are on full display outside of the Muppet Show theater. Showcasing how these characters came together in an origin story, we get a pseudo sketch comedy film that takes us from location to location. Cameos, jokes, fourth wall breaking, songs. Everything that we love about the Muppets is here. And of any of the Muppet films, it feels like this is the one that best represents them. Uncle Kermit, is this about how the Muppets really got started? Well, it, it's sort of approximately how it happened. My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I wanna to talk about the original Muppet movie, what makes it special, and why it still matters decades later. With a budget of $8 million, Jim Henson and his company went all out for the Muppet movie, showing off their technical abilities in puppetry. But there was an original worry. Could the Muppets work outside of the Muppet theater? By that, I mean, do these characters seamlessly fit into the real world, and would audiences accept that? Once they worked out tests with the characters, locations in California and New Mexico were set up. The sets were built so that Jim Henson's puppeteers could collaborate with the live actors, and then shots were thought up in order to create special moments, like Kermit riding a bicycle or Fozzie driving a car. And what makes those moments so special is that they were all done practically. A crane was used to make Kermit ride his bicycle, or puppeteers had to stuff themselves into cars to make the characters work. As an origin story, this film begins with Kermit the Frog, and slowly introduces us to the rest of the Muppet Show main cast one by one. It allows for enough time to get to know each character without really crowding up the movie. It's a smart way to make a Muppets film, and it's actually something that Jason Siegel tried to reproduce in 2011 for his version of the Muppets. The other benefit to this film is that it takes us on a road trip, showcasing different locations that are filled with celebrity cameos. And even though most modern audiences may not know all of these old school celebrities, there's still enough big names that pop up, like a Steve Martin or an Orson Welles, that younger fans might notice and point out. But the soul of this film is Kermit the Frog, who you can also say is the spirit and embodiment of what makes the Muppets work. He lacks cynicism, he's always optimistic, and he finds the good in everyone. Of any character that's ever been created for film or television, live action or not, you'd be hard pressed to find a character more well-intentioned and good-natured than Kermit the Frog. His values rub off on everybody that he meets, including all of the different Muppet characters that he picks up one by one along his journey from the American South to Hollywood, in the hopes that he'll become a star like he was told at the beginning of this film. As we meet each new character, we learn a little bit about them, and whether they're weird like Gonzo, we picked up our weirdo, cool like the Electric Mayhem, or a bit more grounded like Rolf the Dog. I finish work, I go home, read a book, have a couple of beers, take myself for a walk and go to bed. Nice and simple. Each sees Kermit's eternal optimism and enthusiasm as something to strive for. What they were prior to meeting Kermit doesn't matter any longer because he shows them that the world can be a better place filled with wonder and opportunity. Speaking of wonder, I want to point out one of the things that truly makes this movie great. The soundtrack to the Muppet movie may contain the greatest collection of original songs from anything that the Muppets have ever done. I was really lucky to once again get sent a vinyl pressing from the people at uh, I Am 8-Bit and Disney, so thank you for sending that to me. The day that this video comes out is actually the day that this vinyl goes on sale. So if you're interested, in uh, picking this up, I'll leave a link down below in the description. The vinyl that's within this actually comes in a bunch of different colors. I ended up getting Kermit green because obviously, but the artwork on the front and back are the same no matter which vinyl that you get, and they're all beautiful. And these songs sound amazing on a record player. 
One of my favorite songs of all time, Muppets or Not, is actually Rainbow Connection. Just like Kermit, it's a song about wonder and optimism. This movie opens up with this sweet little song where Kermit's singing about believing in the magic of the world because he chooses to see it. It's one of those songs that's been connected to the Muppets ever since it debuted in this film. And there have been a ton of people that have covered it from the Carpenters and Willie Nelson to Gwen Stefani and Weezer. Its message is ageless. And in a time where so much music feels formulaic or cynical or selfish, Rainbow Connection still carries the good-hearted nature of Kermit along with it. But that's not the only song that's worth mentioning from the soundtrack. During the movie, we see this formation of Fozzie Bear's best friendship with Kermit, and the song Moving Right Along showcases the trust that they have in each other. It focuses on the fact that the journey and just being together is more important than the destination. In fact, that rings true for pretty much all of the Muppet characters. Their trust in Kermit also matches their excitement for new friendships and to be on Kermit's journey of positivity. The end result of this movie sees Kermit and company getting an offer to become stars and to start filming their own movie. There's this kind of weird moment when you realize that the Muppets start this movie by watching a movie about themselves and within the movie that they're watching, they get to make a movie that doesn't look like the movie that we started with. It's all quite meta and honestly a bit messy, but it's all forgiven because this film is truly a bunch of sketches and songs put together in a loose narrative. It's all a bit dreamlike anyhow, and the gags and the charm of this film make up for the plot holes. And in fact, I think that we put too much emphasis on plot holes nowadays. And I understand that it's my job to critically analyze films and to point out the plot holes, but sometimes you just have to ignore them for the greater good and to just have fun with it, you know? But I digress. The other major plot line beyond the quest to get to Hollywood is the plot to take down Kermit by the villainous restaurateur Doc Hopper, who feels betrayed by Kermit for not being in his frog leg restaurant commercial. What's great about this plot, as silly as it is, is that it ends in the most Muppet way possible, with Kermit convincing him to change his ways and see how wonderful the world can be if he just spent more time with friends. I mean, once you get all those restaurants, who are you gonna share it with? Who are your friends, Doc? Those guys? For its entire 95 minute runtime, the Muppet movie is a showcase of hope and friendship. From beginning to end, it's a movie that encourages everyone to see the world with a sense of wonder and positivity, to dream and aspire to do something great, but to also find the wonder in the people and places around them in the moment. The Muppets have been around longer than most of my audience has been alive, yet anytime I talk about the Muppets or anytime I talk about the Muppets with somebody who watches my videos or listens to my podcast, they always want to tell me about their favorite film or their favorite character. And you can tell how excited people get to talk about the Muppets. And honestly, I don't think it's that weird. As a society, we're all aware of who the Muppets are, even if they aren't as popular today as they once were. In interviews, former Muppeteer and director Frank Oz has been pretty upfront with his feelings about the current iteration of the Muppets. Ever since Disney purchased them, he doesn't feel like they are what they used to be, and he prefers them to be a bit more edgy, more like Saturday Night Live. And while I understand his point, especially when you go back and watch those old episodes from the original Muppet Show run in the 1970s, I'd argue that something different is missing. Jason Siegel was able to capture it in the 2011 film, and it's those characteristics that we see in the original Muppet movie from 1979. The Muppet characters in the original Muppet movie aren't trying to be edgy or goofy for some bizarre laugh. These are characters filled with a sense of wonder and optimism. And they see the true value in creating and maintaining friendships because to them, there's nothing more valuable than a good friend by your side through the good times and the bad. 
I had fun making this video as I do with all of my Muppet videos. I want to thank I am 8-Bit and Disney for sending me that uh, vinyl. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, you can look for the link in the description down below. As long as it's still available, I'll have that link up and it comes in a variety of different colors, so choose wisely. Um, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you. I always appreciate the people who leave comments and likes and uh, I get to interact with and talk to about these wonderful characters. So leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer it uh, as, as long as I can anyways. And in the meantime, thank you for watching. Thanks for always being there. Thanks for being a new subscriber if you are and uh, keep moving forward.